So basically when I'm mixing my substrates, and I'll put the whole text of the recipe in the um, description section of this video, I use parts. And what um, a part is, is just simply a part of anything based on what you are uh, trying to go for for your total volume. So in this case, I'm approximately filling this tub up ish, but I just started with my cocoa fiber, all that I had uh, reconstituted over here. And so this is my one part for the sake of this recipe. And so then this um, humid substrate mix calls for two parts topsoil. So that means I'm going to dump in approximately twice as much topsoil as I did cocoa fiber. Um, and so it just, it just depends on what your total volume is. A part could be one cup, it could be one gallon. It's just a ratio of your, to of your different individual ingredients based on the total that you want to get. And I just usually start out with one thing that's one part of my recipe, like cocoa fiber, and then I base, I just sort of eye everything off of that. I don't measure anything in exact detail because as long as you've got the approximate ratio, it's not really going to hurt your final mix. So I was trying to get this all laid out so you could see each part with its approximate ratio, but it's just not possible in a bin this size. And I still haven't added uh, the uh, milled sphagnum moss. But we have cocoa fiber, we have topsoil, we have orchid, a coarse orchid bark, um, but you could also get reptile bark. And when I say chopped sphagnum moss in the recipe, I literally mean I chop it. I get the regular dried, packed New Zealand long fiber sphagnum moss that you um, can get and soak and then pack into your walls of the, if you're doing like a cork bark background with pack sphagnum or whatever, that same stuff. And I chop it with a kitchen knife on a cutting board in my kitchen. Um, you can also buy milled sphagnum moss, but I use the long fiber for a lot and it's just less expensive for me to buy like a big block of that and then chop what I need for substrates. So when I finish chopping, it looks like that. There's a few longer pieces. I don't mind that. It creates extra little pockets of humidity for the springtails and whatnot in the substrate. But most of it is really tiny, tiny pieces. So it'll mix well in with the rest of the substrate. And my, to my eye, and I'll go see what it looks like once I've mixed it up, but to my eye, this is approximately one part uh, based on the amount of cocoa fiber that I had at the beginning. And so here you have it. We've got one part cocoa fiber two parts topsoil, approximately two parts, uh, or maybe it's one part orchid bark. I have to actually go look at my recipe. Um, we have chopped, or not chopped, but crushed charcoal. And what I do with this, there's more under here than it looks like. Um, what I do with this, I literally buy the cowboy charcoal, really cheap from Lowe's or Home Depot or one of those um, big box hardware stores. And it's huge pieces. So I put it in a pillowcase and I put it in the back tire of my car and I roll back over it uh, a couple of times until it breaks up. And then any of the biggest pieces that are left, I use for springtail cultures, and then I put the smaller and to medium sized pieces into substrates. This is tree fern fiber. Um, this I try to use as sparingly as possible because it's one of the least uh, sustainable objects in this substrate. Um, and one of the reasons I, uh, but you, I still use it because it takes forever to break down and that keeps the substrate from compacting um, and getting anaerobic. So it's still an essential part for the most humid um, vivarium mixes for like your dart frogs and stuff. Um, and then this is the milled, or not the milled rather, but the chopped sphagnum fiber I just showed you, or sphagnum moss that I've chopped and I just sort of poured it in here across the top so it doesn't lay out um, perfectly nice and even. And you can't quite see all the proportions. Well, like I said, I'll post the actual recipe um, that I work off of that I've been developing over the past couple years in the about section of this video. And here it is all mixed up. I just sit there and mix it up with my hands until it's all completely mixed together and it looks about like that. Now before you use this, um, this mix is a little bit damp um, because uh, the topsoil was wet when I put it in there, but before you use it, you wanna dampen it thoroughly, not so that it's got you know puddles of water in it or anything, um, but just get it thoroughly damp before you put it into your vivarium and you should have a substrate that will last for several years, even under the most humid conditions such as a dart frog tank. I also use this for my more sort of mid humid range uh, arboreal geckos like crested geckos and gargoyle geckos, things you want to keep at 60, 70, 80 percent um, because it works very well for them too.